Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC Battle Series. We are here, it is the Moon Series, we kicked off this week with a brand new team, and as we said in yesterday's episode, if you haven't checked it out already, go up here, I'll link the last two episodes in the description in a card up there for you so you can go and check them out but like I said in yesterday's episode we were really struggling against that Kyogre kind of composition and um, so we have to look at changing things up because it's every match it's not just how we're leading into it it's how we're progressing through those matches and it just seemed too much so we're going to try something different today and this is always a good thing to do try different things see if they work see if they overcome the little weaknesses that you've got there's a ch the changes that we've made, we've got the Abomasnow for the Gengar and the Mandibus for the Tepecoco. Now the two things that I wanted to do was keep in mind was, in the back of my mind, was one thing was even though we're approaching the Kyogre matchup, I didn't want to lose a matchup against Lunala, so we need to keep that in mind as well. Now the Mandibus offers us here, it offers us Tailwind, it extra speed control support for the team that we were missing originally there. It's the dark typing as well that gives us a good matchup against Lunala. You can sit this thing in front of Lunala all day long and it can't touch it. Got Snarl on there, Foul Play on there, Tailwind and Roost. It's got the Psychic Seed to benefit from the, the Psychic Terrain. And then we've also included Abomasnow in there. It gives us the Hail, also benefits Curum. There isn't so much of a need now for the gravity on the Tapu Lele, so we can take that off. We've got Hidden Power so it's got the Hidden Power Fire already, so got Hidden Power Fire on there to help deal with Cortana a little bit better. So we've got three Pokemon, four Pokemon really, in there that can really deal with Cortana pretty well. The Mandibuzz, the Sogolea, Tapu Lele, and the Arcanine. The, tap, the Abomasnow gives us a really decent matchup against Kyogre. It's a nice switching, gets rid of the rain, prevents those boosts and things like that. So we've got little ways to get around it. We're going to have to put this into practice on. That's the thing. We're going into it today. We're going to practice it. We're going to try it out. Probably try it today and tomorrow. And then we might change things up on Friday, see how things are going. If we're going all right, we might tweak a little bit more. But this is a really good thing about this team this week. It's a lot of fun and it's a good way for... It's a good way to portray how we can tweak things to make them better and improve them and shine things up so they're all polished and working perfectly in the end, hopefully. So that's where we want to get to by the end of the, this little stretch of episodes next Friday when we finish up with the team. So, as always, the pace for the team is down in the description below as well as the pocket pace for this updated version. So go and try this out. Um, and without further ado, we'll get into today's episode. As always, if you enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave your comments in the comment section down below. So, here we go. Back into it today. Let's crank the music on and... Um, Hopefully it's a good one. I've been enjoying it. Even though things have been a bit tough for the team to kind of get get a grasp of things, I've still been enjoying it. And uh, the team is a lot of fun to play. And it's nice playing like these quirkier teams. Sometimes on the channel, just to see it and look at different options that we've got going forward. Let's go with some Elite Four today. Um, but, like I say, if you've got any questions, queries or anything, do leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to chat about the team and how we're approaching things. But at the end of the day, it's not massively serious. So don't think like, why well, you're not playing like a standard team. We should see more standard teams. We'll play standard teams, but at the same time, it's nice to look at the format and see what fun you can have with it as well. I think it's a good example. I think we miss sometimes how much Pokemon is a fun game, and that's why we play it. But we're going to get into team preview anyway. Stop my rant, because we're going up against Kyogre, Sogaleo, Serena, Incineroar, Togekiss, and Ferrothorn. Again, the blanks are coming. But, okay, so we're going up against Kyogre, which is great for us going into this first game, because it's the one Pokemon that we wanted to, to test our luck against. So we have got the Abomasnow. It's going to be very good against that Kyogre, the Serena. The Togekiss as well, it's going to be very good against. We have to watch out for those Air Slashes. Um, there is elements of Trick Room in the team that can be set up by that Togaleo, and there's elements of Speed Control with the Togekiss as well, with the Tailwind there. Um, now, I think Mandibuzz is also a very good Pokemon for us in this team. I think it will bring the Mandibuzz here. We need that Tailwind support as well. Uh, with the Mandibuzz, I'm kind of forced. This is maybe a little bit of a drawback to bring this Tapu Lele. It isn't so, benef so really that beneficial in this format. Um, because I need to get the Psychic Terrain activated. Um, but it's always nice, I think, if we bring the Abomasnow as well in the back. And maybe our own Sogaleo. That can deal with primarily the majority of this team. And um, I don't think we're relying too heavily on Arcanine. It obviously would be very nice for that Ferrothorn. But we do have Super Power. We've got Hidden Power. Fire on our Tapu Lele as well that can deal with that. So I think all in all, we'll give this a go to start us off today. And get into this first one. So good luck to my opponent. 
Um, but I, hopefully I'm getting my message across all right. Like, we had such a, like, we played a really standardish team last week, and you saw Presbus Blades doing his thing because we didn't run gravity, and it was our own fault, so we've got no one else to blame. Um, but the thing is, it was a bit of a, a grind at times. So it's nice just to take a break away from that, come back to the fun aspects, the things that we actually fell in love with Pokemon for, and try some different things, and have a little bit of variety on the channel as well, because, like I was saying in Monday's episode, it might be those little sparks here, there, and everywhere, that give you the um, the inspiration to go forward and try something out yourself with some of these things because they do have a lot of potential and they do fill a niche and I think Mandibuzz is something that's very good as well so we lead out with Mandibuzz, Tapu Lele we see my opponent lead off with the Incineroar, the Sogaleo there's the Intimidate cycling there we do threaten the Sogaleo quite heavily here and we are pretty able to just set up our Tailwind but I do worry about the potential Trick Room here so I'm just going to go for that foul play into the Sogaleo we have to worry a little bit about the um, potential. Ooh, do we go for a knock? Like, I feel like a knockoff could come from this Incineroar into our Tapu Lele here, which does worry me slightly. And uh, uh, I want to preserve Tapu Lele, but I, I, we do need to preserve Sogaleo a little bit more than that. Um, so I could just get some damage off onto stuff, and I could hidden par. I could hidden par fire the Sogaleo. We're not going to get too much damage off, but I'd rather do this. Okay, so we do see a fake out, we'll get the hidden power. And are we gonna see a trick room? That's the thing. We do do bad damage, we put it, put it in range, and now we are able to get uh, our own Sogaleo in um, onto the field. Now we do lose Tapu Lele, but at the same time, in hindsight, it would have been better to bring in this, our own Sogaleo in this spot. But at the same time, We risked getting knocked off from the Incineroar, putting us in a really bad place. And then, then if the Tailwind, had, the Trick Room went up from the Sogaleo the next turn, we're in a really awkward position. So it was just that weigh, weighing up of, of um, these things here. So I'm going to go for a foul play into the Sogaleo now. Or do we go, do we set? No, I'll go for the foul play into the Sogaleo. We should get it. Um, I don't know if I want to go into the Incineroar just yet with a superpower because I don't think we get it um, but we can definitely deny the, the the trick room for sure I think I might just knock off into the opposing Incineroar and we've got wide god now on Sogaleo so we're gonna see the Incineroar switch out we're gonna see Kyogre come in so this is really good for us because if this is scarfed Kyogre we're gonna be able to remove that choice scarf and if the Sogaleo does go for a Trick Room, no, it's just going to go for a Protect here. So that's fine. So we do remove the Choice Scarf. There's a foul play. Okay. Now it's not a bad time to bring in a Bomber Snow, to be honest, either. Um, because we can foul play again into the Sogaleo, but I feel like the Sogaleo probably switches out here if I'm like completely honest about things uh, and we could set the tailwind up and bring in a bomber snow which isn't a bad option at all because then we get our speed control and I don't think the Sogaleo position it's in it stays in now we are seeing it switch out and it's in a row in the field now so the one thing that we want to try and do is get a speed advantage over the opposing Kyogre <laughs> and we can maybe pull off a little trick it's going to sacrifice that Psychic Seed, but it might be worth doing. Maybe. Origin Pulse coming out. It does connect with both targets, which is a little bit unfortunate. We might not be able to pull off our tech, but we do get the Tailwind up, which is nice. Now, we are forcing the Kyogre out now. Uh, although we're sitting on the field now, we've got nothing to hit that opposing Incineroar with. Um... It might be nice to preserve uh, a bomber snow for later in the game, but at the same time, it could be a good chance. It, like, I feel like Mandibuzz is kind of ruling the roost now. Uh, sorry for the pun, but it kind of is doing a very good job at just kind of breaking down my opponent's options. Hmm. We do. We could protect a bomber snow here. I have got bulldoze on it, so that's the option I was talking about. We could bulldoze here and bring in Sogaleo, activate our weakness policy, and start ripping through my opponent's team. Um, I do feel like it's probably not a bad option to do. We lose our Psychic Seed, but at the same time, 
we want to try and get Soglero in a position where we can like start doing some good damage with it. I don't see a knockoff from the Incineroar coming into that slot. If anywhere, it's going to be into the Abomasnar and the Kyogre switch out. But as long as we've got our Tailwind up, yeah. And we can potentially, yeah, get the weakness, the Bulldoze. It's a bit of a weird option, but I mean Serena coming out as well, that's fine. That works perfectly for us here because <clears throat> with the Bulldoze, We'll proc our weakness policy. We'll put ourselves in such a strong position going into this next turn where we can Blizzard pick up probably the knockout on the Serena. We can attack into the Solgaleo, take that out with a knockoff. We've got to worry about the um, the Kyogre coming in though as well. So I might be better off just attacking into the Serena with a Sunseal Strike um, and then bringing in Mandibuzz for uh, Abomas now, keeping that around for later so we can disrupt that rain again when my opponent decides to bring it in. Now I think with the weakness policy boost, as long as this opposing Sogaleo hasn't got knockoff, which I doubt it has. Okay, so we're gonna see the Serena switch out and Incineroar will come back in. And as long as we've got the Psychic Terrain up on the field, we're not too worried about these fake outs except Amandabas that's like on the f <laughs> flying, not attached to the ground. Sogaleo gonna protect here. Okay, this is fine. So I feel already like the team has options that are kind of supporting like our worst matchups a lot better here. So uh, we do some nice damage to that Incineroar. Now we're in a position to take both things down this next turn. Obviously we have to uh, worry about the fake out coming out from the Incineroar that can hit either target now. Um, and it probably does go for that. Now I'm going to just knock off into the Sogolet and I'm going to foul play into that slot as well. Oh, do we superpower? Because the Incineroar could potentially just not bother. I'm going to actually superpower into the Incineroar here. Um, yeah, and foul play. Hmm. There's a fake out. Okay, that's fine. We'll get rid of the Sogaleo. This foul play will be enough. More than enough. <coughs> and we just chipped away by this hill and I think a tailwind runs out now yeah which isn't ideal but the Kyogre could potentially yeah come in and I don't mind the actual rain being up at the moment because we can wide guard and tailwind get away with it the problem is if we wide guard hmm The risk of, the, of, the, of a knockoff from that incineral. And does a Kyogre go for it? It probably goes for, yeah, I think we wide guard and tailwind here. The other option is we bring in a Bomber Snow, cause, but we get rid of our weakness policy boosts, which is maybe not the not ideal. Uh, I'm going to wide guard and I'm going to tailwind. Hope this Kyogre goes for Origin Pulse or Water Spout. Ice Beam! Ice Beam! Okay, seeing straight through that, my opponent. And we actually take it. We do get the Tailwind off. Are oh, we going to be able to take a knock? Oh, we should be able to take a knock off. Flare Blitz in the rain. Well, I don't mind this at all. That's fine. Okay. And we know the Kyogre hasn't got Protect, so we can hit into that slot pretty pretty freely. Um, and I think it switches out. If I'm like completely honest, I think the Kyogre switches out. So I could just Roost here, and I'm going to Super Power into the Incineroar. Hmm gonna be close it's gonna be close it depends yeah there's a Kyogre switching out okay so we got this one right we'll get a roost with our mandibus and now we should be in a good position to kind of hopefully be able to close this one out I don't think a feint is gonna be enough to take down Sogalea from this range so get a roost roost it up big bird here we go getting all that nice health back 
Hmm. Okay. Kyogre coming back in. Now, the Kyogre has not got Protect. So we could just double into that slot with a Sunsteel Strike and a Foul Play. And I think that's the best way for us to do this. Tailwind's still up, so we'll still be out to our speed. Sogolea's still plus one, so the Sunseal Strike should be doing enough damage to put it at least in range for a foul play. Uh, we have removed the Scarf already. As we see, the Serena just go for a helping hand. So this should... Oh, yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on. Let's see, it should be enough. I'm hoping it's enough. It's not, we're screwed. <laughs> there we go, okay. So we take the Kyogre down, and now we've just got the Serena's to deal with. So, um, things working out. All right, in game one, I think. Uh, we'll go for Sunsteel Strike and just have foul play again. Um, maybe see a forfeit, because we just got a bomb in the back. Yeah, there we go. So, good game to my opponent. And uh, uh, the team actually doing really well for us today to kick us off. So, um, things going smoother than I thought they would. But uh, very exciting, all the same. And very good game to my opponent. I did enjoy that. So, that's the main thing. That's the message <laughs> these two weeks. Like, I've been pushing. So, um but a bomb is not put in a lot of work. It's really good at disrupting the Kyogre, but I think the star of the show there was really the um, the Mandibuzz. Um, it's a bit weird having Bulldoze on a bomb is but the only reason I've got it in there is because of the uh, the weakness policy that we've got on um, on Sogaleo. And it's nice to have like two options there where we couldn't bring the Arcanine to that game because we just didn't have the room for it. And um, but we were able to have a self proccing option on the team as well with the bomber snow and uh, i don't think we miss like that third slot like we've got protect there we've got blizzard we've got grass knot um so that third slot can really be anything like uh ice beam icy wind um and the bulldoze makes a lot of sense there for this particular build so it came in useful and uh, it paid off so let's see if we can find our next opponent we've got a musical set um as always if if it takes a bit too long to um find an opponent i'll just cut straight to that and -da 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 -da. there we go we've got tofu as our next opponent 1792 rating and playing a team of spicy team it is incinero volcarona amungus xerneas tapacoco and groudon so we've got that restricted core of xerneas and groudon we've got a supporting cast of volcarona amungus there both have access to rage powder Volcarona are going to really benefit from the sun here, from that Groudon has access to Quiver Dance as well. Um, lots of, lots of shenanigans that thing can do, so I don't really know what to expect. It has a really wide and variety, a big variety of moves it can select from. We've got Tapu Koko for the terrain support, um, and Cinero as always for that Intimidate and Fake Out support. Now, what are we going to do here? Mm. Curum is going to be good. Uh, it does have to be careful, obviously, of that Xerneas in particular. Um, but it can be very, very useful. Um, so I'm going to go Curum. And I think I'm going to go Arcanine. I think I bring Sogaleo. And I think I bring Tabulele for terrain control. It helps us against the Moongus. Um, the other thing is, like, Mandibus here isn't bad because of the, the ground immunity that we do. It does offer. Um, the only thing is, it's 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 going to struggle against Tapagogo. It's going to struggle against... Um, Xerneas, it does do a really nice job against Groudon and Moongus, but outside of that, it's not really offering too much. So, there we go. Let's see how we get into this one today, guys. Should be a good match. And hopefully we don't cock it up too much. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. But uh, Tuffy's a player that's always very highly ranked on the Battle Spot ladder, so it's very nice to be able to feature him on the channel, um, and hopefully it's a good match for you guys as well at home. Uh, we are going to see Incineroar and Xerneas lead out for my opponent, um, and we are going to lead off with our Curum and our Arcanine. Now we do see that the, um, the Xerneas is faster than our Curum, so that's good information going forward into the match. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I do feel like will happen here is the Geomancy fake out. So I, on the basis of that, I want to switch in my Tapu Lele for my Curum, so the fake out's not applied, and I want to roll with my Arcanine to get rid of those boosts. Um, and I don't think that is a bad idea in the slightest, so I am just going to make that play. Avoid the fake out and go for that roll. 
Um, the Xerneas could just go for a Moonblast here, but I think it's in a position where it probably feels safe to go for the Geomancy, especially with that fake out support. So that's what I'm thinking will be the play. But no, my opponent sees straight through that. Just Moonblast into Tapu Lele, which we'll be able to take. U turn into Arc 9. And Groudon, I think, going to come in. Groudon. Ooh, Tapu Koko. That's interesting. Let's get the terrain control back. So that's a nice option for my opponent. Uh, the worst thing here that can happen for us is definitely if um, the Groudon gets pulled in now for this Xerneas. But it is the Incineroar. It's all, it's all better. It's all better. So. Um, I think here what we'll do is Bulldoze bring in. Hmm. Yeah. Do we bring in Sogaleo and Bulldoze? We could pull a double switch and get Kyurem out onto the field. It's just I'm a bit aware that um, we need the Intimidate really in the back for when the Groudon comes out so we can cycle it, make the use of it against that. Um, I would expect a Volt switch from the Tapu Koko into the Tapu Lele slot as well as probably a double up and a fake out as well. But you never know. Tapu Koko actually protecting here. We're just going to see another U-turn out with the Incineroar. Yeah. And this time into the Curum. So no fake out from the Incineroar, which is interesting. But wanting to probably pivot in, try and pivot in the Groudon, but it's awkward now for the Groudon to come in, especially with the, um, the Curum out on the field. So that's the thing that you're going to need to try and get rid of. But we've got a nice switch in now to Atapu Lele, or Arcanine. Um, now I do worry a little bit about this Coco with the Electrum Z. But the Groudon is not coming out right now. <sighs> so do I go? I feel like you chase down the Sogaleo if you're my opponent. So I'm going to bring in Lele for Kirim. Just to weaken that Electrium Z if it does come out. Um, and I'm just going to Sunsteel Strike into the Xerneas. Because you might leave it unchecked. You might think, ah, I can get away with it. I can survive a Sunsteel Strike. And getting any damage onto it is always going to be good. But uh, it's likely we're going to be hitting into a Protect here. There's the Z move. Yeah. And chasing down the Sogalel. But this isn't the worst thing in the world because. If it's surprising though, because the Xerneas hasn't protected, so we will get a Sunsteel Strike into it. And we take that pretty well. And a Moonblast as well, no Geomancy, which is nice. So doubling in on that slot. I'm in a perfect position now with Tapu Lele. Because the Incineroar blatantly comes in for that Tapu Koko. Because it's got to feel threatened. It's got to feel threatened from the, the Tapu Lele taking it down with a side strike. Um, and the Incineroar, I think the Xerneas definitely protects. Now, do we make a hard read and say this, like, and go side shock into the Koko? Or not? Because we could just Moonblast and super power into it. We could Moonblast into the Xerneas. I'm gonna Moonblast into the Xerneas and I'm gonna bring in Arcanine, I think. Mm. Or do I knock off into the Coco? I'll Sunsteel Strike into the Coco. It's just that the Xerneas comes in, uh, the Incineroar comes in there. Yeah, it's gonna be the Incineroar and there's gonna be a Protect, yes. Should have superpowered. We should have doubled that slot. Ugh. Never mind. Protect on the Xerneas. 100%. But I mean, still in a position to like 
get it next turn, so it has to switch out. It has to switch out. And we're going to get a bit of damage onto the Incineroar. It's just a shame that we didn't superpower there, because the next turn, if we'd superpowered, we're really keeping the pressure on my opponent, where like we, we are able to pick up a, a double KO, really. We do get the, the critical hit there. And it actually is in a position where we can probably snipe it now with superpower, with that, that critical hit damage. So um, I think we go Moonblast into that slot, and we go superpower into the Incineroar. Yeah, the Katapa Coco is going to come back in. We're going to see Fake Out into something. Well, if there's no Fake Out, there's a Fake Out this time around. Yeah. We'll get the Incineral for sure now. Ooh. Ooh, it actually survives. That's because we're so weak. That puts us in a bit of an awkward place. <laughs> um, but I mean, we've got the Arcanine to bring in. We've got Hurum to bring in as well. It's just guessing which slot that we need to, to get we need to get right. Um, okay. We can't really bulldoze our own Sogaleo anymore, which makes it a little bit difficult. Um, and where are we going to see the knockoff and the U-turn? We're going to see a U-turn for sure, and probably a Volt Switch. For the Coco, you'll probably chase down the, the Lele, and um, I'll bring in Arcanine on the Sogaleo. We'll probably lose our Berry on the Arcanine, but at this point, it's about sacrifice and making the most out of a bad situation, isn't it? But we've got to preserve our Lele, because it's a way that we beat like the majority of this team. There's a Thunderbolt, there's no switch there, so we're just probably going to see, uh, we're going to see a U-turn now, mm. and the Xerneas come back in. That's pretty clever from my opponent. But I mean we don't lose our berry on our Arcanine, which is good. But we might have to sack something. I mean we can protect, we can protect. Kirim for sure this turn, and just bulldoze. They don't know we've got Bulldoze either. But I think we can take... Oh, it's just about taking the, the, the Thunderbolt with Arcanine. Because the problem here is if we get if we don't take the Thunderbolt from Tapu Koko, Arcanine goes down and the Geomancy gets set up. We're in a world of trouble. A world! We need the Thunderbolt to proc our berry. And the Xerneas not to Geomancy. It's gone Volt Switch. Okay, that procs a berry. That's pretty good for us. But I'm going to say the Geomancy comes out here. But it's still not over. It's still not over. We've still got... Yeah, the Arcanine uh, Incineral. Yeah, makes sense. Hmm. As long as you don't see Geo. Moonblast. That's great. Okay, that's absolutely amazing for us okay now we can double into that Xerneas slot well I think what we can do yeah we double into it we have to double into it with an earth power and a flare blitz it's just I could earth power the incineral. That's the only thing. Hmm. But it can only fake out one thing, and I think you do go for the fake out here. Nah. Nah. Tapu Coco coming in, I mean, that's... It's still not bad. It's not ideal as a fake out, though, so we're not going to see... Yeah, that's fine. And I mean, we should get we'll get some good damage onto the Coco now, which is always useful. As long as we're like around 92 or above, we'll be yeah. We're gonna Arcanine's gonna be in a position to take. Now we're in a position to actually get the Incineral now. 
Yeah, we actually are. So we can get rid of the Incineroar. Um, and I don't think we need the Sogaleo anymore. I think we... We're... Hmm. Sogaleo's... Yeah, the Sogaleo doesn't really... We don't need... Do we need... Hmm. Or do we want grout? Like, hmm. Oh, it's difficult. It's difficult. What do we make our minds up with? Do we just go for another... Flare Blitz into the Coco. I'm just going to do that. This is it just a Thunderbolt? Okay. Should take this. I mean, like, now with the recall on Arcanine, we'll lose that, and it gives us an, the opportunity to bring in Tapu Lele, which gives us this perfect setup now if that um, <coughs> Xerneas comes in or the Groudon comes in. Because if the Groudon comes in, we've got the Z move. If the Xerneas comes in, we've got the, the, the side Shock. We get the burn there, so we are picking up a little bit of RNG to help us out on the way. Arcanine going down, this works out perfectly for us, so we were better not making that switch there. The Electric Terrain now disappearing from the field. Um, like I say, we'll be able to get in Tapu Lele. Um, we can even lock into Dazzling Gleam here because the, the Xerneas is so low health. Um, yeah, it's a Groudon. This is fine. And we're safe now locking into Psyshock as well. That's the, that's the other thing. Like, this, we've kind of got my opponent pinned. Like, their best hope is to protect Groudon and hope we have um, a blind a blind blizzard miss uh, but we'll go for the sub-zero slammer into the groudon and um, we'll go for that side shock into the coco i mean do we actually go for the side yeah we go for side shock yeah there might be better yeah groudon protecting is pretty obvious that's their best hope really now we should have maybe been a bit smarter with it where we actually Don't Z move here. Bank on them protecting. And then we got the, the Z move the next turn where we can take the Xerneas. Like forcing them not to protect because they bring in the Xerneas the next turn. They just protect the Xerneas. Hoping that we miss the blind blizzard on them. But I'm kind of hopeful that this isn't this will put them in a position where the blizzard will be enough to take it down. Oh, it's, I don't think it's going to be. Don't think it's going to be. Now the other thing we could do here is the Xerneas has to protect, it has to protect where we bring in Sogaleo, hit a blizzard, Sogaleo goes down to the precipice blades and then we get Lele back in. It could all go Pete Tong though if the Xerneas doesn't protect, but you think in this situation it has to protect, has to. So we're going to make that play based on that. And hope the Xerneas, the Xerneas protects. If it doesn't, then we lose the game. We've, we've made a decision. We're going to back it up. So, No protect! There we go. Well played to my opponent. Because they win now. Unless Precipice Blades misses. Nah. Nah. That's it. That's it. <sighs> well... My opponent making a nice play there. And it's made for a nice game for the episode as well. So we can't be too damn beat about it. But like it came down to that 50-50 and we got it wrong. And you can, like it happens sometimes, doesn't it? So I don't think we did too much else wrong in the game. And getting it down to this point is pretty well against such a good player as well. Um, you've got to kind of just accept that. I think we could still win this. Uh, it's just whether or not the Gardon's got the Z move. Uh, no, it hasn't got the Z move. It's a whether or not we can dodge Precipice Blades and if they don't go Fire Punch, which is the smart option here. So we'll Dazzle, get the Xerneas. And the next Dazzle should get the Groudon. So if he goes P Blades and it misses, nah, obviously. All smart players go <laughs> for the safer option and there's no chance of winning. But 
very good game to my opponent. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Leave your comments in the comment section below. would love to hear your thoughts. But I think the changes that we made to the team have been good. So we're going to keep them and go on to tomorrow's episode um, and see how we can get on going forward. Going to end it there, guys. Just to remind you, though, before we end the episode, we are running a flinched competition this month to celebrate the launch of flinchedclothing.com. So uh, we are doing a big giveaway. The uh, giveaway is up until the 1st of March. So it closes on the 1st of March. If you want to enter, all you need to do is head over to www.flinchclothing.com and you can scroll down the homepage, find our subscription to our mailing list, join the Flinch squad, just plug in your details there, send it over and if your entry is in before the 1st of March, you're entered into the giveaway and we'll announce the winner for all of these goodies you can see on your screen right now on the 2nd of March. So that is the three t-shirts, the cap and the water canister, which is going to be very exciting. But that is that guys, make sure you do enter. If not, just go over, check out some of the articles that we've got over there, check out the clothing, the merch um, and all that stuff and let me know what you think and uh, it would be really nice to hear. It's a very exciting and scary time at the same time for myself but uh, yeah hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode guys thank you for tuning in and we'll be back with another one tomorrow so until then take care of yourselves and bye bye